Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to another Godfather, Godfather Minute. Minute. Uh, I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm Andy Robinson. And we are the Godfather, Godfather Minute, Minute Brothers. Today we are just brothers. Today we are discussing Minute 60. One hour mark, dude. <gasps> One we made hour. It. All right. High five. <laughs> yeah, so we are discussing uh, Minuto Numero 60. Oh, that's easy. Really easy. Say Santa. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And I, when I when I heard it and practiced it, I felt like it was that. Remember the Spanish ad way back years? Like just spell it, socks. S O C K. It's my socks. Yeah, yeah. I remember. You, just, you spelled sock. Oh, S O C K S. See, now you're speaking Spanish. <laughs> it's the same thing for Italian. Sí. Say Santa. <laughs> anyway, minuto numero say Santa. You got it. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice bit of business right there. Uh huh. Uh, well, anyway, minute uh, 60, um, things going to get a bit low-key after the excitement of Pauly disappearing. Uh, mm-hmm. The minute is uh, Clemenza teasing Mikey about not saying he loves Kay on the mm-hmm. telephone. And then he teaches him how to cook for 20 guys. Yeah. And Sonny comes in and uh, starts busting chops uh-huh. because Clemenza is wasting valuable time. <laughs> uh, one thing when I was watching this minute, I was really struck by uh, what a great job... I'm going to go on a limb here and say Al Pacino is actually can be a really great actor. Really? Even in this scene? He well, doesn't do very much of anything. Well, not, I mean, but not this scene. It's not like he has an exciting range in this scene, mm-hmm. but like it's, I can forget that this is the same guy who's in Godfather 2. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because in mm-hmm. Godfather 2, he's so icy and like, yeah, like in control and, and mm. this, he's, he's just like a regular kind of like, he seems much more young. And, like a you kid. Know, yeah, and he's like, oh, come on, yeah. you know, he's, 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 yeah, he's much more like a yeah. kid. So, uh, hats off to Al Pacino. Okay. I didn't think you were going there. I thought you were going to go to Jimmy Kahn or, uh, Clemenza. Uh, well, see, like Jimmy Kahn, I don't feel like has really shown, I, mm-hmm. I haven't seen him very much, admittedly. I think yeah. the only things I've seen him in are maybe Misery, this, and, uh, he was on a TV show called Las Vegas. Mm. I don't think I've seen him anything else. Have you seen a lot of Jimmy Kahn movies? I saw Rollerball. I saw part of Rollerball. I never got to finish watching it. That happens to me a lot. Yeah. And I also saw just the other day, uh, A Bridge Too Far. Oh, Jimmy Kahn. Oh, Jimmy right. Kahn is in it. He yeah. Me the yeah Anthony Hopkins. And it's a true World War II story. Well, how was it? I didn't finish watching it. Oh. I really just watched 10 minutes of it because oh, okay. I was in between stuff. But I do want to give it a shot. I think I saw it years ago and I remember mm-hmm. being good. I don't remember Jimmy Kahn's role. Yeah. I don't I don't know his role. I don't know how he, what what branch of the military is in. I don't know how he earns his, his what, do, what would it be for military? Pension? His, uh, his uh, veteran yeah. rights? <laughs> or veteran benefits? Yeah. Though it is his right to do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, I'm uh, a little that, bit into Last Tango in Paris. I talked about that already. Uh, you said you were going to watch it. Yeah, I started watching. Cool. It. It's a did you get weird to the butter film. scene. No, I did not. All right. It's uh, it's very European. The mm. movie. Okay. Uh, I don't think Brando has said like I think I'm maybe like 20 minutes in, and I don't think Brando has like maybe spoken like four words. Oh my oh, gosh! Wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway. I'll uh, give you a regular report when I yeah. finish it. Do you think "Get Me the Butter" is? The, of course, you got to say it like yeah. like Don Corleone. Do you think "Get Me the Butter" is "Get Me the Butter" is yeah. the last tango in Paris? As I'm gonna make an offer I can't refuse is to the Godfather. It's definitely the line that most people, yeah, quote. I think I know kind of what it's what's gonna happen in it, but mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what the context of it. I mean, mm. so uh, have we talked about the movie "The Wild Ones" yet? The one with where uh, Marlon Brando's the motorcycle. Yeah, because that no. was on just the other day. I caught about five minutes of that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you're watching five minute chunks <laughs> yeah. of movies. Well, I'm in this whole minute podcast yeah. state of mind, so I can never watch more than it. <laughs> you can never watch more than one minute, Alex. <laughs> is that just that? Uh, is that the Don imitating Mama? <laughs> that, was, uh, that was that was meta meta. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the wild one? I know the five minutes I watched was very interesting, and, and maybe it was just the five minutes I watched, but Brando didn't say a single line. <laughs> he pulled up on his motorcycle, and there was some woman uh, yeah. who kind of went up there and started talking to him, kind of bugging him about something, and he just 
sort of dismissed her. But it's, it's interesting to watch, see the clothing styles. Mm-hmm. Like, really? They're that wild? They look so square. <laughs> uh, you know what the famous line from that one is? No. Someone asks uh, Marlon Brando, what are you rebelling against? And he goes, what do you got? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it is a great line. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So what does that mean? What do you got? I guess he's it, rebelling against everything. So he's saying whatever you got. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm rebelling, rebelling against it. <laughs> whatever it is, I'm against it. <laughs> yeah, that makes it seem less, uh, <laughs> less, less uh, badass. If you're quoting a, uh, Rufus Steve Firefly. That's a Groucho Marx line for our listeners, yeah. in case you hadn't heard. I don't do, think you, do we a, need to explain that? Is that our our listeners also Marx Brothers fans? I don't know. I was actually just asking somebody about that. Like if mm-hmm. people still like, I don't even know if people still know who like Bugs Bunny is, mm, wow. you know, or like those, like, just like <laughs> you know, anyway, let's talk about minute 60. Wait, uh, one more point about yes. that is, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait the, a minute. <laughs> the way you said that and looked at me when you yeah. said that, it sounded so extreme. You sounded like this guy <laughs> wearing a bathrobe in the middle of Times Square. What, what happened? Uh, I don't even think people know who Bugs Bunny is. <laughs> I mean, you didn't say it like that, but that's how it came across. Yeah, I did. I did feel like someone at a Twilight Zone when he suddenly <laughs> stepped into an alternate world where no one knew Bugs Bunny, where was. everyone carries around these little machines and they're part of the palms of their hands yeah, and, and can yet, see the future, <laughs> and yet they can't see Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Uh, yes, minute six, Minu, minuto sesanta. So I gotta give uh, Pacino credit for yeah. being a good actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little less credit to uh, Richard Castellano as Clemenza. What? I think his Italian accent in this scene is a little, mm. speaking of the Marx Brothers, I think it's a little offensive. Wow. Yeah, what do you mean? So, uh, you know, he's doing like, oh, you were so little, you know, mamma mia, you know, tell the girl <laughs> you love, uh, you know, like, but, but he just can't get away with that. But he's thing. Sicilian, so he can do that. I know, but Come it's, on. you know, you just don't, it's, it's, I found it, I found myself triggered and I found myself very, unco- very <laughs> uncomfortable watching it. Get out of here. <laughs> You're, come on, he's allowed to do. Come on, you you are half Polish, right? Yes. So you are allowed to tell the first half of a Polish joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's that's fine. I'm not triggered by that. <laughs> I'm still waiting for those punchlines, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they'll got three to six weeks before they show up. Uh, and by the way, how many? And I'm half Polish. Too. I'm the other half Polish. Uh, how many? <laughs> you can Pol- only tell the ends of jokes. <laughs> how many Polacks does it take to screw in a light bulb? How many? The world will never know. I'll never know. Unless they go to Poland. <laughs> I went to Poland a few years back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like their light bulb screwing procedure is so complicated. How how complicated is it? I, I can't tell. I can't <laughs> tell you that. So you don't think you have no problem with him doing it? No, time, not at all. It's great. And it's also a different age. I I think I can separate uh, ca- characters and writing from right. the time. Although this yeah. is written in the 70s, which it was probably still okay to do then. Oh yeah, the seventies. You yeah. could get away with the yeah. all in the family. You had to say yeah, that's uh, true. A lot of uh, so words you couldn't say now. Would it have been okay to do if it was written now and filmed now? I don't. Th- I think they would cut it out. Really, even if it took place in the forties or the seventies. Yeah. Wow. I just think because like, I don't know. It's too there's, risky. It seems like there's some accents like everyone's allowed to do, mm-hmm. like British accents. Yeah. No one ever goes like, oh, I can't. Did you hear that guy was doing like, a, yeah. why did you suddenly break into a British well, accent? They've been a privileged yeah, people. Yeah, I guess they're at the, they were there at the top. But yeah. so were like Spanish people were the, on the top for a while. Oh, Spanish from Spain? Yeah. yeah but if I say, true. you know, if I start doing a Spanish accent, then everyone's like, oh, it's like. Hmm. But I guess there's a difference between a Spanish and a and a Latin accent. That's true. Maybe we should stay on point with the yeah. minute sixty. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's gonna only end before uh, you get yourself in trouble. Only end dangerously. Yeah. So, uh, but I but I thought it was great. I thought Clemens is doing that. He's, he's, rad, I, he's I really razzing did. Michael, and it just like he yeah. it, it seemed very real to me. I really, I re- actually did think it was good too. Mm-hmm. I was not, uh, I was not actually yeah. triggered. That was what they call satire. <laughs> But yeah, I thought it was, it's definitely a good uh, character thing, conveys the relationship, like the, you know, teasing kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. I learned uh, that Clemenza is Sonny's godfather. Did we know that? Mm, we knew that in the book. Oh, okay. Yes. So I don't uh, remember if they say it in the movie. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think they do. Because I was surprised. So Clemenza is Sonny's godfather. So yeah. does, does Sonny then, well, apparently he doesn't. Uh, serve him he's not like oh god he's not like hey godfather i uh 
I, uh, my loyalty is to you. And then Clemenza just busts his balls. <laughs> Clearly, Clemenza's <laughs> under Sonny. Uh, I mean, he's under the Godfather, but Sonny's giving him, him orders now. I guess because because he's Don like Don acting Corleone Godfather. Is, yeah, I guess because Don Corleone is out of commission. Yeah, but if the Don were not shot, could Sonny still command Clemenza? That's a good question. We yeah. never really get a chance to uh, to see that. We never get. Yeah. We never see anyone boss around one of the capital regimes who's not the boss. Yeah. Even Tom Hagen. Does Tom Hagen boss people boss Clemenza or Tessio around? Hmm. I don't know. Like when Michael. Okay. So when Sonny is dead and mm-hmm. Michael is in, uh, I guess the, the Don's still alive at that point. Mm-hmm. So he would be the one. But I don't imagine he was involved in the day to day operation when he was still no. so ill. So I wonder who was the. Uh, who was like kind of running the day to day operations? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'll keep an eye out for that in the book. Yeah. Do you think it's like a uh, you can call like a temp agency? You're like, oh, our Godfather's <laughs> sick. We need a we need a temporary Godfather. Oh my gosh! They send like Bruno Tatalio over, <laughs> but he has to. You know, he has to do the best job he can. He That's can't like point. throw it for the other That's team. True, yeah. He has to. Well, because he's really the work that he's going to do. The quality of work he does as mm-hmm. the substitute. Don for the Corleones that will reflect on his ability to move up in his own family. Oh, that's true. They'll be like, <laughs> why did you do such a bad job for the Corleones? <laughs> that's my Tatalio. <laughs> do you think they have to do, because they have to call in the next guy in line, regardless of what family they're in because of union rules? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all union rackets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard uh, Bruno Tatalio is about to go from marijuana to heroin. <laughs> Someone on the uh, we really are wandering. There's not a lot in this minute, so that we're gonna get to why we're kind of wandering around. But someone on the uh, over at Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse nightclub brought up that line: the the he's about to graduate from marijuana to heroin. Yeah, that's right. Does he mean that they are providing the drugs, or are they like, oh, we're gonna you're gonna get bad publicity? What what is he exactly threatening him with? Yeah, boy, it's going back in a, a few chapters. It's right. going back. Just you know, what, yeah, what your gut. Uh, my gut is that it's a little of both. But even though they don't deal in drugs, it's a, yeah, it's a little dangerous. It's dangerous, but I have a feeling that there's still some drug activity, even though Don Corleone is not is not openly oh, yeah, definitely. supporting it. Yeah, Because this is not the selling of drugs. It's, it's using drugs to frame someone. For a different right. goal, it's not like they're making money off of the sale of drugs. So you think uh, that Tom just business. has like a kind of like a slush fund of like drugs yeah. and stuff, and he's like, okay, give him some. It's heroin. like petty cash. <laughs> yeah, you can fill out to fill out a, uh, a form to to uh, <laughs> leave a receipt for. Uh... All right, well, we solved that uh, that question. So going back to the list of of substitute dons, uh, you mm-hmm. know who's second after Bruno Tatalia? Uh, who? Frankie Five Angels brother in Sicily. It's <laughs> <laughs> a real uh, convoluted chain of uh, like we'll he just, be here in four weeks. He just comes and stares at the enemies, and they, oh, yeah. they pretty much shut up. <laughs> Could have had his own family. They say that's supposed to be a good um, like uh, technique when you're in a conversation with someone is to not speak do we already do this on the no, show I don't I don't think so. like you know your Im- people's impulse is once someone else starts talking to just jump in and, and mm. respond but if you just leave a gap there the other person is much more likely to like they're gonna feel the need to keep talking and, mm. and, and they feel they're in a weaker position because they're like so they're what, waiting for you to jump in and you're just kind of like uh so what's the so the purpose of creating that pause is to to just gain a superior position. Yeah, is to oh, okay. that you know that person will. Like, yeah. Once they're done with their planned statement, they will then <laughs> fall into some. They'll accidentally blurt something out or. or, or I, I was gonna. <laughs> I was about to say I'm gonna start trying that at yeah, work. Yeah. But I'm a little worried that people would just think I'm not either a freak. Either they think I'm a freak or I haven't been up and listening to them. Uh-huh. Well, you should just go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do that all the time. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> but like arch I do that one half the time on this and... podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, who else would be a good substitute, Don? Could you pull someone up from a lower rank? Well, I was wondering if you could also, uh, like the training, Don's in training. <laughs> yeah. uh, or I was thinking like you, you go instead of like one of the Italian mobsters, you get like one of the 
Jewish mobsters or oh, Chinese gangster or something yeah. like that to kind of cross an yeah. uh, exchange program. Nice. Yeah. It's a, like an inter-ethnicity exchange program. Yeah, like on I the like Next it. Generation episode where they had a Klingon officer come on the oh, that's great. on the Enterprise and they had <laughs> Riker go on the Klingon <laughs> ship as an awesome. uh, exchange program. So you're saying Worf would be a great substitute on Corleone? <laughs> I think he would be. <laughs> he just They will not refuse my offer. <laughs> yeah. Sonny, I like your attitude. Let's go to war. <laughs> Can you imagine Worf and Santino as a as, wow? As that a is a team? that's a wartime that's <laughs> yeah. a wartime Gulfieri right there. Talk about no more Salazzo meetings, no more Salazzo tricks. <laughs> By the way, I want to point out to our our regular listeners mm-hmm. that this is exactly the kind of stuff we talk about in the bonus material. So if you are interested in, in subscribing, hearing more of these kinds of of uh, sidebar conversations. Well, speaking of which, do you want to uh, do you want to announce what's going to be going on in today's bonus content? That's right. Yeah. So uh, anyone could sign up by going to godfatherminute.com and signing up for the bonus content. We have different tiers. T i e r s. Yeah. Slash support. Yeah. You even if they go to Godfather. Yeah. There's, there's a link it? to it. There. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 You'll see the link. So for our yeah, send it a whole lot of links. A whole lot of links. A whole lot of buttons. To press. Uh, I get Do they still it. call the them buttons? Do they still call them buttons on the yeah, internet? Click the, click the, you'll see a button marked sale. You don't, you don't hear that as true. much anymore. Yeah. You just, just say click early, on, click yeah. on sale. To but get in the, the early days of the internet, there were definitely buttons you clicked on. Yeah. Right? Anyway, yeah, what's so the big announcement today? So give me a drum roll, Alex. <laughs> no, no, no. Get rid of that cat. I said, <laughs> give me a drum roll. <laughs> Uh, the big news. Sorry, that was an improvised scene where I brought the cat onto the uh, to the set and I was uh, <laughs> yeah. having a. So for the supporters of Godfather Minute, you all already know that last minute in the bonus content we revealed the new shoot the shoot the Turk or Salazzo countdown. Our new new countdown song. Yeah. However, I I tricked Alex and it was it was a fake out. It was, I have to say, it's the cruelest thing you've ever done. <laughs> to me, at least. Uh huh. That's right. Well, do you just wait? Every 10 minutes, it'll be in, every 10 podcast minutes, there'll be another cruel trick. It was cruel, but not unusual. <laughs> so it was. Yes, a, mention I, it. Don't I, insist. I totally punked Alex. I, I revealed a, a, a different version of the, the new countdown, but it was just a phony fake version. Mm-hmm. But today, in today's bonus material, I will reveal the real They'll shoot, shoot the, the Turk, Turk countdown. countdown. Yeah, I think Exciting. I'm just going to call it shoot the Turk. Just shoot the Turk. But maybe shoot the Turk countdown. Yeah, we'll see. But stick We're around. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and if you don't have access to the bonus content, just go sign up, and you will be among the first to hear it. Although we will play it here eventually. Once, eventually. once we realize how many minutes are left until the Turk gets a shot. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it may be a few episodes though. Cool. Yeah. So I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. It's. I have to say, I'm very proud of it. It's one of my, one of my better musical performances Mm. and very creative. And I think there's there's a lot in there. Nice. Yeah. It's a uh, densely packed Mm -hmm. Turk. So stick around for shoot the Turk countdown. Uh, one thing uh, in this scene, Clemenza is giving the recipe for, uh, Mm -hmm. which I guess is a real thing. Like Mm -hmm. you can actually follow his recipe, and he says, uh, in. when Coppola was writing the script, he had him say brown the sausage, you know, to, and then uh, Mario Puzo said, no, 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 gangsters don't brown, they fry. Mm. So that's why he says, oh, oh wow. fry the sausage. He doesn't say brown the sausage. Oh, I guess wow. that's too, uh, too high brown yeah. too. Uh, well, brown the sausage. That makes me think that maybe Clemenza's wife was behind oh. some of this dialogue. <laughs> it could be. It has you her know? fingerprints all over she it. She does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said, Archie, what's his name? Uh, Castell- what's his name Peter again? Peter no uh, Pe- the actor oh Richard Castellano Richard Castellano Richard you gotta, gotta teach Mikey how to cook it'll be a hit with the crowds <laughs> it's like, oh, kind of, <laughs> like Edith Bunker <laughs> and then she wanted to create her own cookbook series the Clemenza cookbook series mm-hmm. I'm surprised no one did that I can't say for sure, but I guarantee you there has to be a Godfather cookbook out there. Really? Somewhere. Yeah, there's Godfather spaghetti sauce and there's really? you know Godfather's pizza and like. Well, I don't think Godfather's pizza is uh, is sanctioned by Paramount. Uh, no, but I mean, I'm sure someone. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if it was an official sanctioned Godfather cookbook, oh. but I'm sure someone. I'm sure somewhere. You know what? 
We, we at, asked, you at, I asked, will answer. answer. So we'll answer that in the uh, bonus content. All right, write that down. Yeah, Is right. there a Godfather cookbook? See how many Godfather cookbooks there are on Amazon. <laughs> in particular, it'd be great if there were Clemenza one. Yeah. Because then he could have all his recipes. And they're written in his style, his, in his vocal style. <laughs> like it's just transcribed <laughs> from his... Uh, yeah. Alex, have you ever had to cook for more than one or two people? No. No. I don't think so. I'm not much of yeah. a I'm not much of a I'm not that strong a cook. <laughs> I could probably make cereal for twenty people. It's about the extent of it. As long yeah. as you don't want milk in it, then, then <laughs> that's out of my league. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, do you brown the flakes? And- <laughs> hey man, that's a, that's a personal question. <laughs> Hey, brown the flakes, kid. What's the mo? What's the most uh, elaborate thing you can cook? Whoa, I used to cook that you that you comfortably can cook. I can still cook. Yeah, that or, I've cooked before. Yeah, mm, I can do mac. I, it was funny just today. I was telling someone that I have not cooked since nineteen ninety two. I think. Oh, he must be so hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, every time I see this Godfather scene, I get even, even hungrier. Um, Probably a, um, um, I don't even remember what I used to call it. it was penne with marinara and regat. Hmm. Uh, it was like a pasta dish. Nice. Yeah. I don't even think I was competent enough to cook meat and put it in. It was, it was just pasta sauce. You just and, put, you but it was put... regat in there and marinara and, hmm. and um, parmesan. Oh. Huh. So it was like well, a three a cheese of different kind of thing. In yeah. There. yeah. Yeah. But Good that's the you. extent of it. I am, I am definitely not a cooking dude. Yeah. Me too. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think? Go ahead. You go you ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> All Are right. you moving on to Sonny? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I think it's great how Sonny comes and just starts busting Clemenza's chops. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What does he say? Come on, enough of this shit. Uh, you have more important things to do. Yeah. <laughs> First, I thought he was talking to Mikey, but that doesn't make any sense because yeah. Mikey's a... Uh, as Clemenza says, oh, the Turk knows he's a civilian, mm-hmm. which is uh, always goes back to that, like the honor of the mafia is like mm-hmm. they would never hurt someone who was a civilian. Yeah. So um, is that a better way to go? Yeah. I if you are so. in a crime family that you have this sort of Geneva Convention type rule set that everyone abides by. I would I mean, personally, I would say yes, because, mm-hmm. you know, because if if you were to say, you know what, civilians are fair game. Then like your family would be at risk. Yeah. So really, Luca Brazzi would be the only one who would be like, I don't yeah. care. I don't have any family. Don't call me home. I have no family to speak of. <laughs> it's my family. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think it's a good. It's a good. Uh, well, that's the right answer because we wouldn't want your brother to get whacked. <laughs> whacked. <laughs> whacked. Uh, yeah, but so- I guess it depends who you are too. Because if you're the underdog and you're trying to get out from under, you're trying to get some traction in this world, you may have to resort to breaking that code to, to get ahead. It's like, like uh, George Washington's army. They resorted to guerrilla warfare. It killed Washington that he had to fight that way because mm-hmm. it was, it was not honorable, right? but it was the only way that his army could fight and stand any kind of chance. So I guess it depends on what position you're in. Uh, it's funny because in olden days, I've been reading a bunch of like history books and in olden days, like armies used to not attack civilians, like mm-hmm. the Brit, but I guess nowadays it's like, you know, we bomb civilians all the time, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, it's just, we, we see it as a fair target because mm-hmm. if you, if you, if the civilians lose their will to fight, then they'll, it'll, you know, but yeah. it doesn't seem to work. Anyway, so, no. so Sonny asks, oh, uh, have you, have what happened with Polly? Here we go. And Clemens has the great line. line. Oh, Polly, you won't be seeing him no more. Woo! It's a great one. Yeah, that's the that's the bread and butter of the cannoli countdown. Too. It's true. Polly yeah. won't be seeing him no more. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, Clemens is talking to his godson there. I think for fans, that line is just as significant as "I'll make him an offer he can't refuse." Um, uh, for your father, your father. <laughs> or maybe you'll have to one. go before judge in the yeah. morning. Show cause <laughs> <laughs> all the great lines. No, but I mean, all, you know all the all the classic ones that yeah. that lay people enjoy. I can't think of any of them. I make them an offer you can't refuse. Oh, keep your enemies, your friends close, your enemies closer. Take the gun, enemies close. Cannoli, exactly. Would you uh, agree? Paul, you won't be seeing him no more. I don't think I would not. I wouldn't. I would put that as a deeper cut one. Really, but among yeah. fans, yeah, among fans, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Although, I mean, I actually, other than you, I have not talked to like a lot of hardcore <laughs> Godfather fans, so I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if you're listening to this and you, we should on mm-hmm. the Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse nightclub, we should do a poll as to what the oh, most yeah, icon, most you know, iconic lines are. So. Well, you and I are both Spinal Tap fans. What would be the equivalent line of that in Spinal Tap? Of Paul, you won't be seeing him no more. So no, most people would not recognize it, but fans would recognize it. Uh, do you have any idea how much it would cost to dress up the <laughs> band as animals? <laughs> Awesome. There's so many, I guess you can do. <laughs> How about, uh, do you, <laughs> it was recorded in Dublin, in Dublin. <laughs> yeah. I think they, actually, I think that one is a, is a much oh, more really? known one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, just cause Dublin, it's like a, yeah. I don't know, but, uh, the one that we use a lot. Is Dolby still a thing? Do people still record in Dolby? I don't know. I, you know, I'm embarrassed to say as a musician, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. So, we they asked, asked we'll we'll answer. answer. What is Dolby recording? <laughs> and is, does anyone do? Does anyone still record in Dol- Dolby? I remember <laughs> seeing it on records as a kid. Oh yeah, you saw that logo yeah. when it was. I mean, I'm, my guess. I'm gonna take. A, I'm gonna make a prediction now okay. that recording is basically all digital. Mm-hmm. That Dolby is is Alex. obsolete. It is not right. used anymore. It's like technical. I don't even know what it is. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, yeah, you, well, well you asked. We'll, we'll answer. answer. Um, here's something I did not ask, but I found out the shocking answer. I went, cause mm. like we said, obviously there's not a lot going on in this minute. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, like half of it is taken up by the recipe. Mm. And, uh, so I looked up Clemenza on the Godfather Wikipedia. Okay. And, um, uh, there was some stuff there that, uh, I didn't learn. That's where I learned that he was Sonny's Godfather, but the one that shocked me the most is that they said Clemenza is the one who told Mikey about the rumors that Fredo was bisexual. What? And that, like, I was wait, like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. We got it. Him? We got to <laughs> break, break it down. Let's break it down. You, you got to say the whole thing over again. <laughs> On the Godfather Wikipedia, uh-huh. where they have profiles and all the characters and mm-hmm. stuff, in the Clemenza one, they they talk about his relationship with the Corleone family and how... Well, you look like you have a question. I do have a question. Just remind me, are the God the Godfather Wikipedia is based on the novels? Novels, video games, any oh, appearances. Really? So any any information out there is in an official Godfather product. Wow, okay. And Got it doesn't it. say where the, it doesn't okay. say, oh, as we learned in you know, the Godfather <laughs> Returns. I hope this isn't in a video game. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all these kids with their crazy games these days. Yeah, so I don't so know. So Clemenza was the one who told Michael. So they said when they were doing, you know, they were help when Michael was move, making the move to Las Vegas. Clemenza was sort of his his like keeping an eye on things in New York, and he kept his ear to the ground. And that's mm-hmm. when he in- so Fredo was already in Vegas though, because he was the first one. He was in the advanced team. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the first. Wave. So Clemenza was the one who told Michael that Fredo is bisexual. That he that there's word on the street was that oh, Fredo man. was bisexual. Wow. Go and figure. Mo Green. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to figure who is he? Who is he doing Maybe. it with? Well, Michael did try know. to kiss him in Cuba. That's that was true. a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! So, well, we could take this in a lot of different directions. <laughs> so you who waited the, for Mama to die. <laughs> who's the best? Who's the best match for Fredo? Oh, Mo Green. Mo Green. Yeah, <laughs> they would be a good, uh, a good, funny yeah. couple together. He, they, or he's he, bickering. <laughs> he, uh, what was? What was? <laughs> What was the, what was uh, Hyman Roth's rub joint call? Like, oh, give him, give him a Roth or something. Oh, one of the well, bonus contents. We, oh, oh, it was hilarious. I don't remember. Anyway, yeah, Mo Green. Mo Green. Yeah, that's why Mo got so mad. He was banging <laughs> cocktail waitresses. Oh, oh he was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> You would say like Johnny Ola or the, uh, the oh that's and that's why Fredo told Johnny Ola on the phone. You guys got me in enough trouble already. <laughs> yeah, and that's Stop why when me. Michael was like, oh, he's like, oh no, I don't know Johnny Ola because he didn't want any like suspicion oh. about. <laughs> yeah, old man Roth doesn't know these places, but me and Johnny Ola, we come here all the time. And where do they go in Cuba? They go to the thing with the guy with the uh, to see the, Superman. The, yeah, <laughs> to see Superman. It all it all adds up. Wow. Wow. So uh, that's Clemenza. 
So why did Clemenza tell Mikey that? Well, that's the thing. I went, I was like, there has to be more information about this. So I clicked on Fredo's thing mm-hmm. since it might be like personality. You know, they go into like their relationships and stuff. And there was nothing in, in Fredo's thing nothing. about rumors that he was bisexual or, or anything. And so, and also, you know, we're not saying there's anything wrong with being oh, bisexual. No, it's no. just shocking. In yeah. The, in never the I heard of it. Yeah. There's nothing in the book, at least yet, that indicates any of that. Yeah. And you know that uh, Puzo would definitely... Oh, he yeah. concludes any sex scene he can. Well, <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, this was written in late sixties. Oh, so you're saying the 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 gay angle know. would be too? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, he hmm. definitely wrote The Godfather to make money. Yeah, and I, he had written a few books, and he was trying to make it as popular as possible. Yeah, but who knows? I do. Uh, I do intend to read those the follow up novels, The Godfather Returns, and other ones. So maybe it's in there. Maybe they like have a flashback. Oh, merda. <laughs> the last dawn. <laughs> um, hey, you should plug the last dawn. Yeah, well, we just released it, right? Yeah, couple, uh, by the time ago. this airs, will it's probably mm-hmm. a, uh, a couple of weeks ago now. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you, that's another thing you can get at the. Uh, that that's one you can only get at the if you're a Hollywood big shot. Yeah, that's not even a regular bonus episode. That's like the next tier. Oh, it's boy. only another dollar a month. Yeah. But, uh, and, he, and even if you join the Hollywood Big Shot level, we may just kick you out. <laughs> How would we do that? Now you get the hell out of here. Oh, Mike, my, oh, Tom, I got you a bonus episode. Look, it's about the last time. And, you know, I sat down and I thought it was going to be a good movie. But let me tell you, my friend, it was very long. <laughs> very confusing. Now you get the hell out of here. When they showed, uh, that'd be great. That'd be so weird. I don't know what you call it in, in movies and shows. If Hagen had showed up to Waltz's mansion and the gift he gave him was the VHS cassette of the last doll. And, uh, and Hagen says to, uh, to, um, Waltz, Waltz he says, uh, uh, check it out. <laughs> like Waltz said to his, oh, wait, check, uh, check him out. out. Check him out. <laughs> We're supposed to do with well, this? Like, oh, because there's no VHS. Thirty player. years from now, yeah. trust me, this is going to be a big. Uh, <laughs> Not now, but thirty yeah. years from now, these tapes will be <laughs> make a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money no, in the magnetic tape spot. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be kind and rewind. <laughs> hey, did we talk about the possibility of creating doorbells for different that have? messages you can record on them different voices i, I think you and i talked about that like oh, uh, not on the air but uh, okay. in a private a private conversation yeah okay <laughs> maybe that's what we can talk about in the bonus episode i feel like it's going to be a very meandering bonus episode yeah if this episode is yeah. any indication write that down what message would you want on your doorbell okay from the godfather and and i apologize in advance if we already talked about this uh no i definitely don't think we did the godfather because no? i would have remembered Don, godfather to, doorbells no i would have <laughs> Would have thought of you know what because I, I would, we would have come up with something for Hyman Roth or whatever. No, you get the save, out of here. <laughs> save it, save it. Okay, we'll save it. What do you rate this minute? Um, before we rate it, can I can I jump add a couple more things? No, before we get to the. Sorry, there's no time. Okay, let, you know let's rate it because but then I have a round a couple roundup items. Okay, I'm calling roundup things from previous episodes. Are you calling roundup unresolved. I'm calling roundup. All right. Now we need a roundup theme. <laughs> insert roundup music. Oh, merda. I'm going to rate this. I love this minute. I have to say, I know it's slow, but the interactions between Sonny, Clemenza, and Michael Mikey. are fantastic. It shows the family. It shows the ball busting on two levels. Right. Like the work one, Sonny to Clemenza, yeah. and then the more friendly, familial one, which is Clemenza to Michael. Hmm. And then the Pauly line, you won't see him no more. Yeah. I'm going four. Four stars. I'm going wow. Four. I love it. Uh, it is a good minute. Four seems a bit extreme. It is a good mm-hmm. moment of characterization. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go three personally. Mm. Okay. Uh, I understand. So do you think Clemenza would bust Sonny's balls? What do you mean? Would it like his. Clemenza is basically like an uncle to them. You mm-hmm. know, I'm sure with growing up, they were around him all the time mm-hmm. and stuff. So. Does Sonny's status as as heir to the empire mean that Clemenza would not bust his balls because that would be seen as like I think so. Whereas Mikey, he's not he's not in the chain of command, so he could still he could still play around with him. Probably. And yeah, yeah, yes. I would say yes. Right. And 
Santino's temper is is infamous. Right. And all the interactions we see between Sonny and Clemenza, granted their stress, uh, Santino shoved him. That's Santino right. Santino tells him to shut up yeah. in this scene. So I get the impression that Clemenza does not bust Sonny's balls. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that's probably yeah. a good point. Do you think he busts Fredo's balls? Hmm. Or is Fredo almost like too weak to be yeah. like... <laughs> Yeah, interesting. When I was reading if his he Wikipedia doesn't. page, it was so sad because they're like, "Oh, like his mo- he, his mother adored him, but like like his father never really had any respect uh, for him, or like you know, mm. he was going to become a priest at one point, then he got molested what? by a priest, so he what? quit going to the priesthood." You yeah. serious? <laughs> that's what it says in the Wikipedia oh thing. Um, maybe that's this. Maybe that's the same story. This bisexual thing came out in. Oh but, my gosh! Uh, maybe whoa! If you take that stuff into consideration, it sort of explains his character more. Yeah, he's, like, I mean, uh, he's he's an alcoholic, probably. If yeah, he was, if he was molested and beaten and up. he had a TV show in in Las Vegas. Oh man, <laughs> that is awesome! It was like a public access show. It was like late night with Fred Corleone. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk more about that when we get to yeah. Vegas. It might be in the book for all I know. Oh, but, uh, that's great. <laughs> oh man, so well, he obviously it can't be yet because there's no television uh, at this point. In the 40s, there's no TV? Well, not certainly not like... Yeah, not regular Not like a you know, widespread thing. Oh, yeah, but, uh, that's true. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So did you, do you want to do your roundup or do you... Yeah, do just a couple of quick items. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so a couple... <laughs> uh, the last time we recorded, we couldn't remember the name of that great... that the, A quotation that I wanted to remember that you said. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about using the plural form of nouns but ones that are not frequently used, like data. Mm-hmm. People consider right, correctly, that singular. Yeah. And we talked about using the plural form, even though people may think you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, and you said, quote, you'll risk someone thinking that you're wrong just to know that you're right. Right. Yeah. That, that was great. I just wanted you'll to revisit risk, you'll that. Risk knowing, you'll risk, you'll risk <laughs> no one thinking that you're wrong just to know you're right. Just to know that you're right. <laughs> just to know that you're right. <laughs> Uh, and the other one, let's see. No, that's it. That's I just had one item in the roundup bag. All right. So until uh, next time. Yeah. Uh, believe. Well, let's plug oh, one whoa, thing. Whoa, let's we, plug what? We can't use our, our regular sound off anymore. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do? Oh, man. Maybe we need to poll the supporters. Until then, I've pressed thousands of punks. <laughs> Perfect. Let's try it together. Until Does then. Does it say thousands, though? Or is it the, is I don't remember. We have a thousand young it. punks, maybe? <laughs> Let's do what we definitely can know. <laughs> and and it needs to be in the future, right? It, yeah, it needs to be ideally in okay. that minute that, okay. that that when he shoots the turks. How about so. this? How about this? Until <laughs> next time, stand him up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go with that. It's not in that, that minute, but it's, very, it's, it's know, pretty funny. It's, it's, All right. it's a little quick. Do we need something catchier, though? <laughs> no, I like it. Until next time, stand him <laughs> <No>. up. <laughs>